And that's what's happening with us. The extinction of the Anglo-Saxon race is, uh, is, 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 is just like that. Hello once again from the very, very capitalist kingdom of Cambodia. Now, you guys might have seen the title and you're probably thinking, Kavanakul, I've seen this video before. I've seen you talk about this subject before. And you have seen me talk about this subject before. I'm happy to admit it. There was a video I made three months ago talking about like the America First Caucus and people thinking they're proud Anglo-Saxons in America. I did videos about the Lord of the Rings, people saying the new show was Anglo-Saxon cultural erasure and so many dumb things like this. But this topic is very, very vast. And if you want a good breakdown or I guess a better breakdown on the history of either the racialization of the term Anglo-Saxon, how it was influential in the founding of America and things like Manifest Destiny. And of course, like the actual real history of the group known as the Anglo-Saxons, please check out the video from a couple months ago. But what spawned this video is you guys probably heard those leaked tapes of Matt Walsh from a couple years ago. And in one of them, he talks about the extinction of the Anglo-Saxon race. And I want to talk about that. And I just want to talk about more about the contemporary racialization of the term. And I also want to use this video as an opportunity to respond to a lot of the stupid comments I get whenever I start talking about Anglo-Saxon identity and racial identity and how insanely racist it is. Like it takes just like our modern understanding of racism and divides white people into different groups. And when people used to say like, you know, Irish people were discriminated against Italians, Greeks, more Mediterranean Europeans who had white skin and stuff. And people who look like me, for example, it's because of this like Anglo-Saxon racial identity where these people from Northern Europe and Germanic backgrounds and stuff like that, they thought they were racially superior to everyone. And that included other white people. So we're gonna talk about that today. And also I think it says so much about how much of an ultra conservative extremist Matt Walsh is in that he believes in this stuff. And this guy purports to be some sort of like right-wing intellectual while talking about the Anglo-Saxon race. So we're gonna get into all of that today. And we're just gonna talk about like the ridiculousness of claiming to be some sort of pure Anglo-Saxon when most British people are only one third Anglo-Saxon. And these are English people, right? They're not American. They didn't go to America, this massive melting pot of loads and loads of different ethnicities and stuff like that. So we're gonna talk about all of that today, but before we go any further, please like the video and in the comments, I guess, please just tell me, do you know anyone who identifies as Anglo-Saxon? Do you know anyone in your normal life who claims to be Anglo-Saxon? It's not a popular thing in the UK anymore, although you do hear it sometimes, but it seems to be catching on a bit more of Americans these days, especially as the right goes more explicitly xenophobic and stuff. So let me know down in the comments. Also consider following me on social media at The Cavernacle on Twitter and on Instagram. And Instagram is where I'm posting all about my travels and stuff. It's in my like Instagram story. I sometimes make actual posts and stuff. So if you care about my travels around Asia and you wanna follow them, go check out my Instagram. Also consider becoming a patron as well trying to build as many $1 to $3 patrons as possible. And the benefits of that, again, access to my Switch friend code and the private patrons Discord server. Also, I have been promising this for a while, but I'm finally gonna film my thoughts on Vietnam for patrons exclusively. Like I said in the last video, my girlfriend's been really sick and we wanna film it together. So I was waiting for her to get better. So at the weekend, hopefully we do that early next week. Again, exclusive for patrons, that one. Also check out the second channel, The Cavern Aqua Extra, and check out my subreddit. So early on in this video, we're gonna be talking about the Matt Walsh clip, but just like a brief history of Anglo-Saxons and the racialization of the term, in case you're new to my channel, in case you haven't watched the other videos. Basically, the Anglo-Saxons, who never described themselves as Anglo-Saxons, were Northern European migrants and conquerors who came to the British Isles after the Roman Empire left. Now, basically the Roman Empire largely left the British Isles. Most of people in what we know as the UK today, they were pagans. Britain actually had a lot of people still believing in the Roman gods compared to most mainland Europe that had converted to Christianity. Basically the Irish were invading parts of like Wales and England and the Scottish were also invading parts of England. So the king at the time, I go into the specific history in my other videos, the king at the time invited the Anglo-Saxons over from Northern Europe to help fight these groups. Contain people from Denmark, contain people 
from like the low countries and contain people from Germany itself. And it was the Angles, the Saxons and the Jutes primarily, but there were some other groups in there. So basically a big group of various different tribes that were fairly closely related came to the UK, were granted land in Essex, but then, you know, thought it was so nice, thought they'd expand and more migrants came over and they fought various wars with the English, eventually becoming like the dominant elite group in England. And obviously the lot of the population makeup was made up by these Germanic tribes all coming over during the years after the Roman Empire left Britain. So already before they came, the Anglo-Saxons were not like a coherent ethnic group anyway. Like, like they were similar to each other, but they weren't all the same. And when they actually came to Britain, of course, they started mixing with the local populations, which were a mixture of like Roman, some even Middle Eastern and African, as we're going to get into in a second. And of course, just like various different like native groups in Britain itself. So you've already got like a massive melting pot. Remember, England was owned by the Roman Empire for hundreds of years. The Roman Empire that expanded across Africa and the Mediterranean, you could go to England if you're a Roman soldier and stuff like that, coming from anywhere across the empire. And these people like to talk about like this pure Anglo-Saxon identity. And then of course, various Scandinavian invasions in the form of the Vikings started at the end of the eighth century. Eventually various times, Vikings owned massive parts of Britain. They actually owned the whole of Britain at one point. And of course, loads of Scandinavian people came over, settled, farmed, mixed with the populations of Britain. And of course made it even more diverse genetically. And then in 1066, we have the Norman invasion. The Normans who are a mixture of Norse Vikings and French came over, conquered England and settled England. Not in as big numbers as the Anglo-Saxons did, but still a significant amount. And they fundamentally changed the social structure of what would be known as the UK in later years. So that's just a brief history for you of Anglo-Saxon England and how it was never this like homogenous group, even in its conception, even in the early phases of the migration, it was not a homogenous group. So even talking about this as like a singular racial identity is just really bad science. And just to prove my point a bit further before we start talking about what Matt Walsh says, I wanna talk about the actual genetic makeup of people in the UK. And this was a study done in 2016. So 2016, English DNA, one third Anglo-Saxon. Present day English are about a third of their ancestry to the Anglo-Saxons. Scientists sequenced genomes from 10 skeletons unearthed in Eastern England, dating from the Iron Age through to the Anglo-Saxon period. Many of the Anglo-Saxon samples appeared closer to modern Dutch and Danish people than the Iron Age Britons did. Results appear in Nature Communications Journal. Dr. Stephen Schiffels of the Max Planck Institute for the Science of Human History in Germany sequenced genomes of human remains from Hinkston, Saffron Walden, Linton and Oakington, all of which are near Cambridge. The burials fall into three different age categories, Iron Age, Early Anglo-Saxon and Middle Anglo-Saxon, Contrary to narratives suggesting large-scale displacement of the Britons by the Anglo-Saxon invaders, the researchers found evidence of intermarriage in the earliest phase of the settlement. From there, scientists could track the contribution made by those Anglo-Saxon migrants to modern British populations. They found that on average, 25 to 40% of the ancestry of modern Britons is attributable to the Anglo-Saxons, but the fraction of Saxon ancestry is greater in Eastern England, closest to where the migrants settled. In another study also published in Nature Communications, Professor Dan Bradley from Trinity College Dublin analyzed the genomes of nine individuals from Roman era York. They found that six of the individuals, presumably indigenous Britons, were similar to modern Welsh, but different from the populations living in Yorkshire today. However, one of the individuals had genetic affinities with people from North Africa and the Middle East, providing evidence of long scale migration in Roman times. The burials at Driftfield Terrace from which the genetic data was drawn fit the profile of Roman gladiators. So as that article makes very, very clear, Britain has been a melting pot for about 2000 years that you have Roman gladiators, Roman legionnaires from throughout the world, like the Middle East and North Africa. And like it said there, the Anglo-Saxon ancestry is stronger in Eastern England. And then you have people in America who cannot even trace their ancestry back to England because they probably lost it or you know they don't have their records and stuff, let alone know if they're from Eastern England where it's stronger. And they say they're 
the Anglo-Saxon race without knowing where they come from. And I've said this in other videos, I know pretty much that my family come from Ireland, like going back hundreds and hundreds of years, perhaps even over a thousand years, I know that. And I also, I'm not sure that I'm fully Irish. Look at my you know, features, I have dark hair and stuff like that, which is more similar to people from the Mediterranean. So maybe in my family somewhere, I might be descended from immigrants from the Mediterranean or something like that to Ireland itself. And they might have married in to one of these historic families. I simply do not know. And I'm someone who can trace my history pretty far back than most white Anglo Americans can. So with all of this in mind, what I've just told you, we've talked about the DNA, we've talked about all this stuff. Let's listen to Matt Walsh talk about the extinction of the Anglo-Saxon race. Mind you, but if they, they don't exist in a vacuum down there. They're just the, if there's a, if there's kind of like a portal to, from another universe or something that is letting people through, they're, they're right at ground zero of the portal. So they're going to get everything first, but then we're going to get the, we're, we're going to eventually get it too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so a 213% increase in Hispanic children in the next 40 years. That's insanity. That's actually the next 30 years. Um, the well, stage... that's, that's and that's at the current rate, right? Like, you know, if they if they do, you know, magically put up a wall or something of that nature, that that would that number would probably come down a little bit, wouldn't it? Yeah, at the current rate, that's that's what they're looking at. The state's largest county, Harris County, will shed Anglo's throughout the coming decades. Shedding Anglo's. There's a yeah something band name. By 2040, Harris County will have about 516,000 fewer Anglo's than live in the Houston area in 2000. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, we get the, the, the specifics of the Texas demographics, not really important. But the point is, you see how, um, and, and we've heard this before, maybe this is more dramatic than what we've heard in the fo before. And when no one's actually said, it's over for us, we're done. Our, uh, our race of people, uh, we're, we're, we're singing our swan song right now. We're the last of the Mohicans, the last of the Anglos. He's the first person to jump to that conclusion. But all the studies we've seen, and just when you look around yourself, that's what you see. Now, there might be some people that say, well, okay, so what? Um, big deal. It's not, you know, it's still people living here. So, so maybe, the, yeah. maybe the races mix a little bit, and it's no big deal. We all, we all move on. Well, it is because we're all dying off. It's, yes, that's what the problem is. It's not, that, it's not that we're just, you know, as the Mexicans come in, we magically meld with them and become like them. It's not like that. It's that we are dying off. Just like, just like any other species of animal does. We're dying, and the way that, that animals, there's two ways that animals die off. No, three ways. One's disease, two is uh, deforestation, or they lose their, 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 their habitat, which, okay, look at us. And then the third one is that they stop reproducing. And, those, and usually all three of those things happen kind of simultaneously, and that's what's happening with us. The extinction of the Anglo-Saxon race is, uh, is, 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 is just like that. Now, the solution is pretty simple. It's just the solution is to freaking reproduce and have kids but, and have family. So am I listening to Matt Walsh, someone who works for Ben Shapiro as a Daily Wire, or am I listening to Richard Spencer there? Because I couldn't really tell because this race realism BS that he's pushing is both insanely racist and, of course, massively compatible with far right ideologies, which he subscribes to. Now, of course, what he's talking about there is basically replacement theory and stuff like that. Obviously, you guys will have heard that recently because Tucker Carlson and the GOP start banging on about it all the time. You have to be racist to another level to be racist against other white people. Do you know what I mean? Like, he doesn't only think that white people, the white race, are like superior to other people and are going extinct. He thinks the Anglo-Saxon race, like they're different from other white people. They're superior. And like I said, it's a very, very old racist belief. It has its roots going back to the Protestant Reformation and the birth of racism with Spain's colonization of the New World, their treatment of Jews, their treatment of Muslims and stuff. And basically, I throw on screen a racial hierarchy from a Spanish plantation in like the early 1500s. There you see like a standard racial pyramid, which Europeans believed in. Anglo-Saxons think they're on top of this. Like they're above all of these groups, including white Spanish and white Portuguese, because in their mind, they are tainted by Jewish or Muslim blood. So that is where Matt Walsh is coming at this stuff from. And like I've already shown you, the history is just not there. And race is a social construct. And I think the Anglo-Saxon racial identity lays that bare for anyone because it's just so ridiculous. Like I said, Angles and Saxons 
weren't even the same thing to begin with. And then they came to England, migrated, settled, married with other populations that were already diverse from the Roman conquest of native Britons and stuff like that. And then you have the genetics of England today, the higher range of some people is 40%, some are 20%, and you're claiming in America, where you probably can't trace your ancestry back to England because you don't have the records and stuff, you're claiming to be the Anglo-Saxon race. And of course, the only reason people do this is because they're insane racist. There is nothing legitimate about calling yourself an Anglo-Saxon. The term doesn't even really make sense on the surface. And then race is just made up anyway. Americans, especially who talk like this, are some of the biggest racists. And for example, I always talk about how race is different in Europe compared to America. In America, if you have white skin, you're considered white for the most part, right? 2022, if you're Italian, if you are Irish, if you are Greek, if you are Jewish and stuff like that, you can pass as white, but not to Anglo-Saxon people. And it's more like a European understanding of race where a lot of Northern and Western Europeans hate and are discriminatory against Eastern Europeans and against other Europeans from the Balkans and stuff. Where America in modern times and even racists in America believe basically if you're white, that's okay. But Matt Walsh takes it a step further. No, if you're not Northern European, you are not white. And that is the Anglo-Saxon race that is going extinct. And again, just insanely racist framing, pushing far-right conspiracy theories. And he basically, in my mind, believes in race realism because if you believe that the Anglo-Saxon race is going extinct and you think that's a bad thing, right? You think that's a bad thing, even if it was real, that must mean you think Anglo-Saxons have inherent qualities based on their race. And you probably think those qualities make them superior to the rest of the population. So of course, Matt Walsh isn't like some big simp for medieval history. He's just like a flat out racist. And in my other videos, I talked more about, you know, how this came to be and the history of the term and stuff. I kind of want to talk about more the contemporary use or at least the last, you know, 150 years of the use of this word to just really get into why these people like this and how insanely racist it is for people like Matt Walsh to be talking about replacement theory, along with claiming to be from the Anglo-Saxon race. This is just funny. I found this on Reddit while just researching. Is it okay for an Anglo-Saxon to date a Latina? And then someone just you saved it because he deleted all the posts about it. But it says, I'm white, but I find the term white to be ridiculous because Spanish, British, German, Russian are all considered white, but have some differences between their appearance. I'm American, but I'd assume I'm mostly British with 15% German although I haven't done a DNA test. Okay, well, if you assume you're British, Scottish people and English people don't have the same genetic makeup. If you don't even know where you're from, there is no way you can claim to be like even from England, let alone claim you're some sort of pure Anglo-Saxon. Absolutely ridiculous. There's actually an Anglo-Saxon subreddit which thankfully is more for discussing Anglo-Saxon history. But I like this post and thankfully some people on the subreddit aren't total idiots, so get a load of this. So my personal argument for the continued use of Anglo-Saxon in the modern world, I'm writing this post as I've heard many contemporary scholars reject the usage of the term Anglo-Saxon, both as a modern ethnic identifier and as a term to describe the people who live in that period. They believe it's an outdated term, which it probably is, and one that has little to no relevance nowadays. Others believe that ushering it is the invocation of white supremacy due to the fact that a very small minority of people used it for racist purposes. Not a very small minority, my friend. I might rebut, however, that said racists also speak English, so should we cancel the language or rename it because some idiots used it? Again, fundamentally doesn't understand this stuff. They are the reason I am speaking English today and responsible for the entire legal framework of England and to an extent, the Western world as a whole. We are descendants of a successful migratory group that migrated to the British Isles. To deny us that term is to deny our history. To rename it because of a small group of imbeciles is the biggest detriment to millions of people who are here today and of our shared cultural legacy. Like, what do we call people who are simps for Anglo-Saxons to an insane level? Is it like anglo booze and stuff like that? I am actually going to make a video about anglo booze, but that's more about the British Empire than these types of people. Of course, what he's saying is not true. And it's also pretty funny, like the Anglo-Saxons are responsible for the entire legal framework of England, which was fundamentally altered by the Normans. But also talk about the Western world, like think about how many groups are in the West, that what, like France and Spain and other parts of Europe, like they rely on Anglo-Saxon shared history or something like this. But thankfully, 
Not everyone is an Anglo boo, and in the comments, someone called him out, basically saying, if you believe this stuff, you're buying into like the racial identity. So someone's saying, here's a fun question. Have you read any of the scholarship that meaningfully addresses the links between Anglo-Saxon and white supremacist movements over the past two centuries? Or are you working on this from a second or third hand digest of arguments? Because your understanding of the theoretical and historical underpinnings to move away from the term is incomplete to be generous. As Donna Beth Ellard notes, first real use of the term Anglo-Saxons is in the 1830s, with textual uses of it to refer to a specific modern Anglo-American identity a few years later. The two are immediately linked. Now here's the uncomfy part. The language you're using is a big long series of arguments to abandon the term with haste. You strongly imply that England is historically only the home of white people who are properly named Anglo-Saxon and whose heritage flows through our veins. In doing so, you are participating in an invented past that is entirely the product of the 18th and 19th centuries and is used both to deny successive ways of immigration in both England and the US Without implying anything about you, your political identities, or any other attitudes about you, you are participating in rhetoric that excludes people of color from the country you appear to reside in. I cannot sugarcoat this. This makes you look an awful lot like the people you call imbeciles. So thankfully, there are people in the Anglo-Saxon subreddit and people who do love this very interesting period of history who do not buy into the racial identity or any people trying to call themselves Anglo-Saxon in 2022 because as I said in my video about J.R.R. Tolkien's love for Anglo-Saxonism he himself would have had to buy into the racial identity the made-up past of the Anglo-Saxons if you seriously identify with them. So just to elaborate a bit further on the history put forward in that surprisingly good reddit comment uh, the Washington Post did an article responding to the America First caucus by Jonathan Davis Saccord the real history of Anglo-Saxons undermines racist theories. So talking a lot about what we've spoken about throughout this video, but some interesting points he brings up that I want to talk about. So he talks about like chronicles about King Athelstan calling him the king of the Anglo-Saxons and stuff, saying that's like one of the first times it was used by other writers and then he goes on to say in the 19th century at the height of british colonialism in asia and africa and of u.s ideas of manifest destiny and continental conquest the term became more popular differentiating white colonialists and culture from the people they were subjugating as britain imposed control over more parts of the globe they used the term to justify seizing power from people of color for example, British phrenologist George Combe wrote that colonial expansion in India could only be explained by the racial inferiority of Hindu people who were utterly unable to contend against a mere handful of Anglo-Saxons. As white settlers in North America displaced Native Americans, invaded Mexico, and expanded slavery to the West, they became preoccupied with notions of racial identity and superiority, and with keeping power in white hands. For example, in describing an expedition to expand Texan control over what is now New Mexico, journalist George Kendall wrote that Mexicans were animalistic, and so they will continue to be until the race becomes extinct or amalgamated with Anglo-Saxon stock. I think Matt Walsh would very much like George Kendall here. The idea that white Americans sprang from some imagined Anglo-Saxon heritage flowers anew in moments of mass immigration or perceived threats to the white dominance. So as we've been outlining on this little series about Anglo-Saxon racial identity, but you fundamentally have to have an extremely poor knowledge of history to really think you're an Anglo-Saxon and you have to buy in to explicit insane racism to describe yourself as an Anglo-Saxon because the term does not really have much meaning outside of that in the modern context apart from just describing like a period of England but even the people who study it saying the term is outdated now because of course Anglo-Saxon is already combining about like four groups of people from across Northern Europe into one entity isn't nuanced enough to really discuss this period and then acting like you have some sort of connection to that past, again, is glorification of history. It's just like we talk about with far-right types loving ancient Sparta, ancient Rome, the Vikings. They feel like they have some connection to this, but it's always based on extremely poor knowledge of history and a glorified, mythicized 
pass that either America as a state is the successor to Anglo-Saxon England or Americans who might have some Northern European descent or more specifically English descent are actually Anglo-Saxons. Pure Anglo-Saxons when a recent study shows that if you're from Eastern England, you might have up to 40% Anglo-Saxon DNA. If you're from other parts of England, it could be a lot lower. And you could also have Middle Eastern DNA and you could also have African DNA because Britain was owned by the Romans for hundreds of years before the Saxons got there. And the time period the Anglo-Saxons ruled Britain is actually pretty similar to the Romans. So that is what the legacy of their like genetics and stuff leaves behind. So to claim that you are just pure Anglo-Saxon is absolutely laughable. And like I said, you're either extremely stupid and you think that, or you have fully bought in to a racist worldview and you fully bought into the racialization of the term Anglo-Saxon, which means you're not even just a white dude who thinks white people are the best. You actually think you're superior to every other white person who isn't from Northern Europe or England. So this is Matt Walsh going like insanely mask off. And of course, it's really funny that he works with a white Jewish guy who is his boss or something, Ben Shapiro, and also a white Italian Catholic, Michael Knowles. Like they're sitting there playing Mario Kart together and Matt Walsh has racist views of his two co-workers who don't care that he says this stuff. And that just shows you everything about the conservatives is that even if, you know, they know Matt Walsh fundamentally thinks he's racially superior to them. He's an Anglo-Saxon, they're Italian or Jewish and stuff. They don't really care and they'll help him spew his garbage. And the reaction to him saying he's not going to be canceled and stuff, don't really care about that. But it's laughable these people don't think they're on the far right. Like I made that video about conservatives all being on the far right in America recently. And Matt Walsh is great evidence that they are because they don't care about someone even talking about the extinction of the imagined Anglo-Saxon race. So again, this is the final video I'm probably gonna make on this stuff for a long, long time. But if you know anyone who says they are Anglo-Saxon, please share any of my videos with them because I think altogether it thoroughly debunks the notion that you can be an Anglo-Saxon in America. Even if someone from Eastern England who had 40% Anglo-Saxon DNA, I would still laugh at them if they called themselves an Anglo-Saxon because I'd be like, bro, what about the other 60%? Anything else in there? You just a pure Anglo-Saxon, are you? It's like you teleported from 800 AD to <laughs> 2022. Again, absolutely ridiculous, but let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.